call this meeting to order. Let's take a minute and uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance. So the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, in roll call, please. <clears throat> So, do you want to do that one? The roll yes. call. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I thought you were going to. That's all right. Um, Jim Tolls. Here. Philip Higgins. Here. John Paulson. Here. Jennifer Bean. Here. Bubba King. Here. Bryn Hanning. Here. Matthew Smith. Here. Here. Peggy Silver. Here. Here. Miss anyone that should be on this list. Here. Good. And apparently, Dan Heister resigned. A while back, and we have not yet filled that opening, so we, we can work on that. Yeah, anybody... I don't know how many knows, but he he resigned because he had a, a severe medical situation um, needed to be addressed. Yep, looks treatable, but uh, that's too bad because he had some brownfield experience and would have been a good addition. Okay, we'll work on filling that maybe by the next meeting before it. Okay. Uh, moving on to presentations, I'll turn this 4.1 over to Jim Tall. Okay, we spent a you. lot of time looking at this plan. Let's see. Where should I start? When this CAC was formed initially, I was of the opinion, and I think Molly was too, that our first major task was going to be that we should um, grade or score all the different projects, and then we would have to prioritize those projects, and we would have to schedule them. And there's 35 projects in this plan. And, and I was all up for that, and so was Molly, and that's the direction we headed. And in fact, as I recall, that's, I think Molly added that to our by bylaws, that we would have such a rubric, and that we would do exactly that. However, then I read the plan, and I read the plan several times, and then I read the report that accompanies the plan, and what I came to realize is that's already been done. The current plan, as was <clears throat> approved by city ordinance in 2022, includes that schedule and that prior prioritization of all the projects. So what I was going to do tonight is show you that plan on a timeline to help us all have us what I think will, I hope will be a, a more uniform understanding of the plan as it exists now. And then later, the city is going to have to show us some things. And then agenda item 6.1, that's where we'll actually get down and discuss about, okay, this is what the plan is, this is what the city has told us, and what are we going to do with that? So that will be the discussion point. So as I go through this, if you have any questions, certainly ask the question. So, <clears throat> And I guess the best way to do this is I'll just tell you a quick one. Tell me where to go. Yep. One thing I want to draw your attention to, I don't see it on this, but the scroll bar is down the very lower right hand corner of your screen down there. Yep. You may have a hard time finding it. Looking for it. You're not running it. Are you looking for left to right or? Yeah, that yeah, one. Okay, you got it. All right. Yep. So let's go up to the top there. So what you're looking at here right now is here's the timeline starting. 2024, 2025, and this is the timeline. And it runs all the way out and off the right-hand screen to 2048, yes. So going back to the end there. Um, and what you see here in the top row right there in red is the anticipated funding or revenue income and the year in which it will happen. So you can see 2025, the plan projected 34, uh, 3.4 million. And then in 2029, another infusion, and so on, all the way down. So this shows you where we expect to get revenue. Now, the rows underneath are each of the sub areas, and it shows as you run over in that row where the funding would be spent in that sub area. So if we look at 2025, which is where I want to really focus tonight, you'll see this coming year, um, 
$3.4 million of anticipated revenue. Now, maybe more, maybe less. I think we have more in the budget. I'm just going with the numbers in the plan <clears throat> because otherwise we'll try compensating for G. Is it going to be what are the interest rates, you know, and that kind of stuff? There's just too many things, variables to think about. Yep. So let's just talk about what's in the plan. So the plan shows us that in, we're going to spend approximately $3 million in Riverfront sub area B. And if you click on this tab down here, we'll see what that is. There's two projects here that are in that, is what you see in that year. And the first one is this one right here, which is River Street Improvements, and that's bypass from the bypass to Rogers Landing. And it was anticipated in 2022 dollars to be $2.2 million. <laughs> if you scroll, scroll down a little bit, now let's to scroll down on that page and you'll see a map of this. So there, right there. So that's this little stretch of road right here. This is River Road coming down. And then here's that railroad crossing that's so hosed up. And it's down here. So that $2.2 million is this stretch of road right here. And the $450,000 is the railroad crossing improvements. And that's what is currently scheduled per the plan, the approved plan, uh, to happen this coming year. So let's go back up. So now go back to the expenditure calendar tab right down here. The other thing that's in the plan for this year is this area here, Riverfront sub area C. So let's go to tab C and we'll talk about that. So this is the, and why don't you scroll down to the uh, map? Yeah, right there. That's good. I'm going to do the light switch. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that'd be awesome. Okay. Oh, yeah. You might recall when we drove down through this area, Russ was driving for those of you that were on the tour. And this is where we stopped and we talked about what would be the projects here. And, and this was a lift station and some wastewater treatment things. And <clears throat> there is no, apparently, there is very little or no sewer service in some of these areas yep. um services available and we have two lift stations older lift stations that are currently doing that job and the plan here was is to build a new a completely new lift station that would replace those other two lift stations and russ's comment at the time was there was there were some economies here for the city as well because it would reduce maintenance um costs and it would give us this new a wastewater uh, service capability in this region. So right now, as things stand, the way I read the plan, that is what the plan says will happen in 2025. So let's go back to the expenditure calendar here. Uh, the one thing I want to comment on is this, this cost right here. In the plan, the cost is listed as approximately $175,000 or something like that. But in fact, to build this lift station, it's going to be way more like $1.7 million. Yes. So what I think happened here was I think this was a decimal point error. Now, some people have theorized that maybe it was more about SDCs and the amount of money that would be applied from SDCs because this particular, um, this particular item is uh, largely STC fundable, or like 90% is STC fundable. Yeah. I just to clarify, yeah. that was not a decimal point error within that. I was part of putting the numbers together with this. That overall uh, riverfront lift station is like, I think at the time it was an estimate of like $800,000. This number here is the amount that the that, uh, Urban Renewal Agency would put towards that. As you mentioned, SDC eligible, so SDCs make up the bigger portion of what yeah, that would be. Yeah. You know, so I can accept that, and that's quite all right. And that's how most of these numbers are. These expenditures are where we're set up as the expenditures that, that the Urban Renewal Agency would fund, and then they go to most of most of them have other funding mechanisms associated with it. So that would be the numbers that Neuro would do with not necessarily fully funding all of them. Okay. There are some that are fully funded. And I others can totally that are not. accept that. So yeah. one of the reasons I, I didn't think that was the case is because there are other projects in here that are 100% SDC uh, financeable or fundable, 
and yet they weren't dealt with in this fashion. So I thought, well, this must be a, a Doug Ross, uh, you know, a decimal point. I, I could definitely so, see where that could be thought of that. Yeah. That's why I wanted to clarify but, that that was not the good news is either way, it doesn't matter because it's going to be paid for with STCs, I think. And well, so it is not going to it's not going to dip into our TIF fund reservoir, so to speak. It can be totally handled by STCs or more or less. Yes. So a couple of comments about that. And um, first of all, as many of you already know, the percentage of SDC eligibility to find that we would find the project, the same project in the SDC data table and look at what that percentage of eligibility is. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. The second thing to bear in mind is these prices are not correct. Of course, they're not. We've just gone through a period of extraordinary inflation in construction. So many of the numbers I see, I can see that they were definitely true in 21 and 20, and they are wildly wrong now. So we may look at some of these, and we must bear in mind that we are now looking at 30, 40, or even more percent more on the top yeah, than, we were, than we were ever looking at then, maybe more. The only, and as I said, alluded to earlier in the meeting, um, the only reason I didn't want to get into that is because there's so many variables there. Totally. So I, I'm just trying to stick with the numbers as we have them. Yes, Understanding, sir. but it's a good point. Yes, sir. That everything has gone up. And right now, we, we're we experiencing all these prices are escalated at 3% annually, and, and that's not happening. It's a way more than that. And we're not going to get a, a loan at the interest rate that was projected at the time, Correct. probably. However, next year, if and when that's when we go for a loan, maybe the interest rates will be lower. So. Possibly. But to keep it simple, I thought I'd just talk about what's in the plan. <laughs> and so those are the numbers that I've been using. Yep, absolutely. So, the other, so this is what is in the plan for this, this coming year, those two items. And you've seen that... Um, it's riverfront section B projects one and two and riverfront section C, the lift stations that are at this point in the plan to happen. Now let's scroll down a little bit. Yeah, go all the way down to this map here, dates of sub area projects. And I thought it'd be worthwhile to show you this overall map. And the, and the numbers you see in there are the dates of occurrence for that sub area. And so here is, right here is sub area B, which is, and right here is that little stretch and the railroad crossing is right in here of the South River Street area that's scheduled for work. And then over here, this is sub area C, also the lift station. Now, what I think is really interesting here is if you scroll up a little bit, oh, the other way. there we go, right there. You saw it down here, we're working on South River Street at um, this year. But look where the next section is from the bypass up to 9th Street. It's, it's 20 years from now. And if you go up the next section going downtown, it's 24, it's 24 years from now. And I know why the, the committee at the time scheduled things this way. This was, they had a hierarchy. And if you scroll all the way down, I'll show it to you. Right there. Oh, you passed it. This was from the CAC meeting in November 30th. And this was Doug, this is the minutes. And this is Doug Rutz saying that the hierarchy that the committee, they did this using the hierarchy that the committee had established. First priority is infrastructure that supports industrial development, then commercial development, then mixed use development with ground floor retail and residential above, then multifamily development, and last single family development. So that was the hierarchy that the uh, CAC at the time used to rank and place all these projects. And let's go back up to the, that map right now. So when you use that, that ranking scale, that's why this here and this here got moved way out there. So that's that's the plan as we see it right now. And later in 6.1, we can talk about that. There's some suggestions that I would like to make 
recommendations that for you to consider that I'm sure will spur lots of discussion. So that's it for now. Oh, I have one other thing here. I, I should tell you too. I want to make sure I get to touch all the places. Yes, there is one other thing. How many of you still have the hard copy handout that Molly gave us on like the first meeting? Somewhere. Yeah. Well, my recommendation is, is please, when you go home, throw that in the recycle bin <laughs> because that is a down revision. It's not the correct revision. She somehow or another pulled up the wrong, <laughs> the wrong version, and it is substantially incorrect. The only place to get the right version is on the city website under the resolution 2022, I think it's 2986 or maybe it's 2896. It's one of those two. And you can find it on the Nura webpage. But that, you should always use that because that's the official version of the plan and the, and the report that accompanies the plan. And by the way, all that data that I just showed you, I pulled that all from the report, which is attachment B to that resolution. Because that's really, for me, that's the meat of the matter. That's the numbers and the engineering yeah. stuff. The, the plan itself is, you know, more visionary. But the real nuts and bolts is in attachment B. So, yeah, throw that away. Go to the city website. Use that one, and you'll be doing the right thing. Okay, I think that's that for now. Yeah. We'll talk about that more when we get to the one. Um. Will Will just said they would be willing to print those for us. That's between the two documents. It's over. It's about 150 pages. So, um, for those who are not preferring, of course, to unless you prefer to print PDF your own. readers. I mean, some people might prefer a tablet or. But if anybody would like a paper copy, we will be delighted to print one. I'd like a paper copy. I'm. Of that age. <laughs> yep. Yes, that, there we go. Meet every reader where they are. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's just assume everybody will get a paper unless you let me know before we leave tonight you don't want one. Is that okay? Oh. Jim? Okay. PDF? Okay. Okay. Is there an option for both things? As a librarian, I need to be next to PDF. Oh, okay. There's a school for Just tired of my eyes. Okay. Thank you very much, Jim. And now we'll have Clay. This is mostly starting with Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah. Probably leading this, but I think there will be contributions from both me and from Will at different times. But there was a supplemental memo that was sent out last week. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to have a look at it. But we basically tried to draft some some general consideration materials to get a conversation started, which would be a no later discussion. But I'm going to let Jeremiah do most of the legwork. We'll let him kind of explain what was shared and what some of the rationale is behind that. Sure, thanks. You. Sure, thanks, Clay. So, what staff prepared uh, and kind of reference in the memo here is we've prepared a draft or rubric that you're welcome to use or not welcome to use. Um, it's based on, um, Mr. Talt mentioned, your bylaws that are having that this group is supposed to create a rubric, square rubric for the projects. And so, to get that discussion started, we we created this rubric with um, goals that were in the urban renewal plan, city council goals, goals from uh, the other master plans, as well as staff, back on. staff oh. input and committee uh, committee member input uh, that we that we had at the time. And so that's what this created. Uh, there's 15 criteria we put in here based on those goals and input. Um, where they came from on the top, you should pull up for a second, Rachel. Uh, or me, over, sorry, I'm I know I'm making oh, control all over the tonight. Still? Yeah, so evaluation criteria. So we numbered the criteria, we have 15 in there currently. Um, you're welcome to obviously alter that or create your own rubric or however you want to do it, modify it. So the goals. Uh, are not the goals in the urban renewal plan. These numbers just line up, these different numbers line up to where the goal or the criteria came from. So, she's um, the implement downtown improvement plan. That was one of the urban renewal goals. So, that number seven, that's where that came from. It's not number seven in the urban renewal plan itself. So, that's just kind of where those goals came from. If this is different ideas. Um, and so, just to kind of kick off your guys' discussion as part of that of your bylaws to create that rubric that will eventually 
make it to the urban renewal agency um, for approval. So I think that's all I have on that. Uh, I'm not making any recommendation. I'm not saying you have to use it. It's just a kind of tool to kind of get your discussion started. Um, this is really impressive. See? And I know it's kind of hard to read. It's, it's right, it's the, impressive. The scaling, we're sorry about that. That might not be <laughs> ideal. But but given, given the quantity of information, and just to reiterate, so what we're trying to do is create some level of consistency between all of you as you talk to each other. The numbers, because they come from different plans, the numbers are really so that you can talk about whatever you see here. So if that's criteria one, it's criteria two. So it's not reference necessarily a plan or where it is in the urban rule plan. Um, and then we were also trying to introduce some of the concepts. Like how do you talk about these things in a relatively consistent way? And so trying to do these Likert scale type things or yes, no criteria to get a score. And some of those, you know, they, they may not just be a zero and a 10. It might be somewhere in between where it's mostly yes or it's mostly no. So this is for you to a starting point for a conversation is the intent. So that's how staff, that's the where we're coming from with that. And well, this is have, to prioritize the order. Yeah. So the that's or, the way that we would really about think of this is that scoring <laughs> exercise is really a prioritization exercise. How does it score or rank or be? what extent is it a priority for the plan and so that's what we've tried to reflect here so if things seem absent bring it up if things are not prioritized the way that they think they should be kind of like how jim was sharing the hierarchy that's not reflected here things can be calibrated so that they do so ask yourself those things will is there anything that you want to share and something that jeremiah and i were not here while the urban rule plan was developed so some of this is looking in the, in the past and some of the folks around this table have more experience. Yes, the only question I might have is, did you envisage it sort of that if this rubric seemed appropriate, that planning staff might come back in or perhaps engineering staff would help as well and add some of the scoring for things like the other master plans, which obviously the committee might not be familiar with? I think that we're open to doing it, however. So if, if they want kind of a staff starting point, we could try and do it that way. We could work with folks. We could have kind of a workshop type activity where it's with everyone and we help do a facilitated version of this. I think there's a different approaches. And so we would, we would just want some direction on what's going to be good for these folks. The other part that for me that came up is thinking about these and we have kind of preferred timelines that are coming out of the plan and the report. But also these are somewhat dependent on these being brought forward, whether that is by the city because it's a city infrastructure project or by a developer that wants to do something. Right. And to some extent, those can't always be known when those folks come forward. I was so say, those were my, how do we deal with that? Right, those were my two questions is one, timing, right? So you say, okay, we're going to do this, and then somebody comes forward and says, by the way, we're going to build something at the mill, and we need so, to stop. So what happens? Right, if you have to like pause and go on to the next thing. And so some of the criteria. My second question. Them, don't forget. But not completely. So that's a good. Yeah. I would say I have the same question, and I don't know how to necessarily operationalize those. But what? Right. Nor do I. And I was looking to you. <laughs> I just I, I suspect that just in terms of administrative burden, right? Mm -hmm. I personally would not have the time to study the master plans and assess a grading based upon the num the incidence of that thing being named in the plan or, mm -hmm. or its priority within each plan. And I would suspect that most committee members wouldn't either. Right. On the other hand, there are some things here that are more what I would describe as perhaps common sense or more gut instinctual things. Do we think this would bring more jobs to the town or and those are things that the committee, I feel like the columns could maybe be graded by committee members with relative comfort without having to really know all the city's master planning. So that's why I was thinking. Well, my, I was going to say my other, I guess my other sort of wild card to throw in there too, which is where engineering would come in, is right? If you say this is priority one, priority two, priority three, and engineering says, we're going to save more money if we do priority one and three mm -hmm. and then come back to number two just because of the way, you know, the pipes work. <laughs> I, I, can, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, that type of thing happens constantly. So 
how I'm just going back up a little bit. I was part of whenever the urban renewal thing agency was created in the plan and the discussions during that time with the CAC with that kind of those same questions came up with these projects and, and in this element and the prioritization and using the prior that you had the, the excerpt there that Doug commented on during that those those criteria I think that's what you're looking to those kind of criteria to set up that gauge of things as things that the committee probably wants to be involved with I think some of the more technical stuff maybe that is something that goes yes. to staff and maybe something along this rubric could be broken up into the scorings of the different components. Mm -hmm. There's also that with the development of a, we are currently working for the, the going to the two year uh, budgeting. So we're working on a four year CIP that's going to capture what projects and things are, or elements are there that come from rates funding and SDC fundings and all of that. The urban renewal is kind of a, is a potential to have those dollars available for a project to, to work into that process. Yes, And what I recall coming out of discussions, and this is a little bit of just my memory, and I don't always have the best in that regard, so I like to refer to the notes and things, but what I recall, and my takeaway from the whole thing was thinking in terms of these dollars and what year, those are dollars that are available from all of this increment tax increment financing component. And the projects that are listed are the ones that were thought of at the time that would be most beneficial for the variety and to meet the criteria. But by the time you get to actually doing something, depending upon what development is occurring, what projects the city already does, maybe there's different priorities or different elements. So thinking it in terms of those are dollars to spend in that area and collecting it during that time period, that project may or may not go forward, may not actually be constructed. Like mentioned in 2025 for the riverfront um, street section, the funds could be collected and the urban renewal has it available to spend. Maybe that's enough to build the entire project. Maybe it's not, maybe it needs to wait until there's funds from other sources, those come together, but the urban renewal agency has made a priority and a commitment yes. to spend that money on that project for when it does go for, it is brought forward either through private development at the mill site um, on that Western edge develops and they get conditioned for frontage improvements. The river street project goes through with that and they get urban renewal dollars in order to, to, to fund that piece of it. That's so how I've always envisioned. From right, so the, from everything's that. like a little post-it note on this thing and they get moved that's, around. They get moved around. That's exactly how the conversation was. These are the, these are the years of the potential arrival of these funds. It was always thought of that these would be blended with other funding sources. And then they, they would occur as and when they could after that year. And some it might take one, two years, some might even take three years. And I think it was you, Phil, when we were getting out of the van or after we were on the sidewalk, said those dates were somewhat arbitrary by the uh, committee that put the urban renewal development. I don't remember but saying that. You don't? But, okay. No, but I mean, they look kind of they look kind of arbitrary to me. I mean, I think when you're so, forecasting that far, mm -hmm. you're not you're, arbitrary, but they certainly get less accurate as you move forward, the same way the inflation rates what? do and the cost of And you throw COVID in the middle of it and, Could right, you, you know, helping. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, because, I mean, just even looking at the stuff that we just touched on that was on the 2025 budget, I mean, to mobilize people to do that in 2025 at this point would be difficult, right? And that, yeah. that's, that's what I was thinking yeah. about. But that's the funding commitment from the urban renewal agency. It doesn't necessarily mean that's when it's constructed. Mm. Yes. That's how I that's always envisioned we, that. We commit to funds. Yeah. yeah. So we may expect design work to start maybe at the end of the year that we would expect in the following right. year or the two. RFP work. and yeah. bids and all that sort of stuff. It's, yeah. it's kind of put together <clears throat> a, the CIP project and things. What we're looking at is projects, you know, the things that want to get built but also what are the resources to actually do the design and construction and those elements? What are those elements? Because there's always a desire to, even if the money's available, there's a desire to go do everything all at once, but maybe there's not all of the resources necessary to do it at then, so it has to be, be broken out and scheduled out and planned. So I think all of this is true and accurate. And I think if we come back to that discussion of rubric, I mean, it's, it's really for the committee to give us guidance. Would, would they like to see some role on these technical columns for engineering and planning first, well, or would you we prefer a... 6.1? Yeah, we're kind of moving into that. Sure. Is there any public comment tonight, Rachel? No, not. No, okay, thank you. So now we can move into six uh, new business and discussion of the implementation schedule and funding availability.
Okay, well, I'll, I'll take that one because I put it on the agenda, right? And we've already sort of started the discussion. So I'm going to just, in the interest of expediency, I'm just going to get out there with a Jim Tall suggestion. And uh, <clears throat> and there, I have three of them. So I'll just read them to you because I, I, I didn't want to get anything wrong, so I typed stuff at a time. Uh, first would be use the existing approved project plan but with one little tweak. And that would be recommend to the city that after completion of the sub area B projects one and two and sub area C projects, the next project should be sub area E, which continues up River Street and the River Street improvements. And I feel pretty strongly about that because I remember driving down the van and I remember someone who might, might have been the city manager saying, this is one of the worst streets in town. Probably the worst, huh? I also know in conversations with Russ Thomas that he, he feels that way. And if it was up to him, he, the expert, one of them in the city, that would be his number one choice would be work on River Street. And he spent 15 or 20 minutes telling me why that was all a good idea and going through all the reasons related to existing infrastructure, existing and future planning development. I could never possibly hope to duplicate what he told me. Later, when you're done with the other two options, I can summarize yep. why the River Street bullet points. So that that's that's my first suggestion that we, as a committee, indicate to the agency that we support the existing plan more or less, you know, because it's flexible as it currently exists and as it was approved by council resolution, but. That's where we deviate a little bit. We would suggest to the agency that the proceeding of River Street and proceeding with River Street improvements would be a good thing because I'll tell you, if we wait 20 years to work on River Street, we'll have this nice riverfront development, but you'll need the four wheel drive to get to it because River Street will be in such bad shape over here dirt road by now. So that's, that's recommendation number one. Number two is. Don't go through a rubric scoring exercise at this time. And I will say, when I when I looked at this, I thought this is a pretty darn good job. And I, I have the same background as Molly, and I like rubrics and I like scoring systems and I like metrics. And I looked at this and went, oh yeah, this is exactly what I like. And but I think right now at this time uh, that it's unnecessary because ninety percent of the projects and ninety percent of the spending is ten to twenty years out. All we need to figure out right now is what to do in the next one to four years. And that, to a certain extent, has already been done. So it would be, it'd be, for me, it'd be a fun project to go through all that. But there are 35 projects, and ranking all those would be quite a science project. So I would say the experts, we're the amateurs, well, at least CFC members, we're the amateurs. The experts live in, under the skin of the city, and they're at least some of them that are indicating we should work on River Street. And we already have an approved plan. So why should we go through a rubric at this time? And my third suggestion is related to that. Now, I do want to say one more time, you did a really nice job on this, whoever did this. I think it was you. Um, I, I liked it. The third suggestion would be is that we delete the rubric requirement from our bylaws. <laughs> a rubric could still be used in the future, but it would no longer be required. So it could be used. This CAC sometime in the future or a future composition of CAC members in the future, if they felt the need, they could do that. But I don't see the need right now. And I don't think we want to mandate to ourselves that we go through this exercise right now. The easiest way to do that is to delete um, Article 4, Paragraph B, the scoring mechanism from our bylaws. We just created these bylaws. We did it ourselves. We put them in there. We can take it out. And I think we should do that. Where's your gavel? Keeping in mind <laughs> that removing them doesn't preclude the creation and use of this rubric or some future rubric. In the it just future. doesn't require it. So those are I'm, my three suggestions. I'm, I'm, I like that um, because I think a lot of the work has already been done. We'll save ourselves some time and get busy focused on projects. I also like being able to include it at a later date because I'm a big fan of coming back and looking at something and seeing if it's giving us the desired result. And if not, then 
you know, doing something else. So, and I often find that not for everything. When you get to downtown, it's, it's a very complex situation with downtown section. Um, but for many of these things, you don't need to go through the rubric. It's just talk it out right here and now, and 15 minutes later, we're, we're done. We know because it's common sense kinds of judgments that can be made by CAC members. And, and the other aspect of that, too, is rather than having CAC make suggestions or score things and push that towards the city, I would rather have myself, the city, come to us at regular intervals with their recommended suggestions of how the city would like to proceed. They're the experts. And then the job of the assistant advisory committee would be to listen to those recommendations and ask some questions and and maybe provide alternative input. But I'd rather see the experts coming to us now at this point saying, for these various reasons, this is what we think. I understand. I think especially especially in light of the difference in numbers, right? Because there's a there's a lot of new math that needs to be done to to assess that because the the original assumptions on you know the amount of money that this was going to take are wildly wildly incorrect. Yes. However, we have a Scotsman in our city, and I understand they drive hard bargains. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they do. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of it. So. You know, they're, they're tough negotiators. And so competitive negotiation, uh, competitive bidding. Some folks got their ASME union to agree to 3% when they got seven just a few miles down the road. See, I rest my face. Is, is any other, anyone else have reaction to those suggestions? I have a question about the funding. Um, is this the only source of funding to do to do River Street? Like, is there was there never any other plan to fix River Street? Unless this came along. And I think go ahead. So there there originally before Elliot Road went massively over budget, I always thought there would be some regular transportation funding left that was not SDC funding that could be blended into River Street. From utility transportation. Correct. Utility. So there would be other bits from other pockets. Currently. There is, I believe it's 30, just moved this yesterday, 34% STC eligible, or is it 38? It's 30 something percent STC eligible. And there's STC transportation funds available. We perhaps will have a small amount of transportation money available, but not much. The projections right now for rates funded for transportation are limited. River Street would definitely require a bond. And I brought some information about that for the meeting tonight that I got, that Katie did the research on. So there will, there will be other little bits, but not you. We, normally we would hope to turn to the regular transportation fund and draw it down by a couple of million dollars. That doesn't exist. I wanted to add, in general, thinking about the project, if the you know that would have theoretically been included because the objective of the urban renewal district is to remove blight from the area. So it's the objective is to unblight things. So that's not the only way that we can unblight things. It's, this is just one funding mechanism to make that happen. Yep. It's just we don't have we're not in a great place right now fixing River Street right now. And back then we had two million dollars in reserve. For, for transportation, and we'd saved even more just before Elliott Road. And things were way cheaper. And things were way cheaper. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but say, you know, when you when you commit to doing a project like that, you say we have a certain amount of you know either transportation funds or urban renewal funds or the combination of both and SDCs. Doesn't that, in theory, make it easier to reach out to some of our other perhaps state or federal partners and say, hey, you know, we have we have a pot of money. Can you make that bigger? Because we're committed to spending yeah. this. Yeah, and and this this is a primary road that connects to you know major industrial area, and we have a tenant down here, and we've got to you know do all this. So definitely, I mean, just recently, I got a grant award for five hundred and eighty thousand dollars to help cover the water plant ponds, based upon the fact that there was some matching funds 
already in our CIP plan and that was shown to the feds. It's always a bit of a crapshoot, right. but it can definitely help when you can show skin in the game. And I think, and forgive me if I'm, if I'm saying too much, I'll stop, but I was just going to say, Jim, I think that your points are incredibly well made. I think the, the, the logic of what you're saying is entirely rational. And we know that River Street is the worst major collector street based on engineering data, the worst in the street survey that we just did. It is extremely related to moving employees out of the mill site when it develops. It can assist slightly with House Bill 2001, very marginally in the places where the pipes cross the cross section. And then lastly, the county has expressed interest last year in spending some money on developing Rogers Landing. Well, imagine that. And all of these things tie together. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll stop now unless you want me to talk about bonding. Tell, tell us, just for people who don't know what a collector street is. Oh, I'm going to pivot to Ray. Okay. He will, he will yeah. know. I see them on the map. He will know the definition of that cross section and why it is that cross section. I'll give kind of the simplified version <laughs> yeah, of the definition. So, is good. so, I'll start just kind of with the local street or kind of your residential elements and things, your neighborhoods and things like that. So, Collector Street, arterials, those take people from those neighborhoods to other destinations. Think of River Street takes you from the neighborhoods off of 9th Street and off of 11th Street and, and down off the riverfront area and takes it to Highway 99W, the arterial that goes through town. That's So the collector street is at home up there. And there, the a, a major collector like River Street is intended to have the bike lanes as well as the sidewalks. And you don't, you don't have the parking there unless you do a wider right away requirement for that. So okay. Thank it'd you. be like Mountain View is a yep. yeah. collector. Yeah. Yeah. Mountain View is uh, the material. Well, oh. actually, yes, yes, Mark. Mountain oh, View is wow. material in that regard. Yes. Thank you. And it's, what were you thinking? Thank you, Paula Shums, for like paying for that upgrade. Like Matt. Um, oh, Matt, sorry. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to ask is uh, construction excise tax funds available for any of these um, no. projects, especially the ones that are on the river that are to come in? Two city limits, um, anything like that? No, you can correct me. If I, those are, by law, they have to go to affordable housing projects. That is correct, yep. Well, it's okay to ask about this. I, yeah. I did have a question. So, Jim, you had said in kind of recommendation two and recommendation three. So, to me, recommendation two is kind of a rubric it's just a rubric it's just a very simple one what are we doing in years one through five if that is clearly laid out and that is essentially the rubric that is important to the cnc at this time i mean that's that's just it doesn't have to be a big elaborate scoring exercise it's just a very simple one but i think that would help and i'm thinking operationally when we have projects come in um, if we have people asking us can i request funds and if if the CAC has kind of made their what they think is important to know for years one through five to Nura and the city can do that. I think of, we've had three different projects that have come in and said, hey, we're on the urban rural project list. What are the chances we can apply for it? And they can make the request to the urban and rural district or the urban rural agency. But knowing that the 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 very simple version, the is it on the project list for years one through five is the rubric. To me, that is still an exercise that could be completed if it's clear that these are the only things that are going to be contemplated in that time. That's one way of operationalizing it potentially. It's not necessarily for me, it's not a rubric and that it has only one criteria that you're looking at. But yeah, I wouldn't call it a rubric because rubric somehow or another connotates something more than than. But it, it's a scoring mechanism. It, 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 it connotates a scoring mechanism and a process that I like to just not include in our thinking at this point because we have we have a plan and the plan was already set and it's already been approved by city council resolution. Um, now, when you said people come to you and ask for what, what we were entities these are these you're talking about. I don't know that the entities all want their information shared, so I'd, I'd rather not share that. But 
when we have, for example, pre-application meetings, we have conversations that are typically between building, planning, and engineering. Yeah. We typically have PGE attend those. Sometimes Tualatin Valley Fire comes. And if if there's other agencies that might have to be involved in that applicant or potential applicant can invite those folks. And so we've had three different entities approach us and say, hey, we're interested in this project. We're interested in doing this or that. And we believe that some, some aspect of this is covered by the urban rule plan. Mm -hmm. So how does that work? And our statement up until this point has been, here are the lists, here are the locations, you may or may not be eligible for these projects and these locations based on what you're doing. And we don't have a timetable for you right now. And it's still being set up. So that's where we've left those folks. Right. It's saying that it's still early days and that we don't have a way for them to submit a request to the urban Rail agency at this time. Which was also convenient in that this there was, was no so money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's part of it. That's, 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 that's that's part of what you were talking about earlier. That that new opportunities come up, uh, projects change. Right, um, right. Because when a project shows up, you 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 look at it and you go, okay, that project will again create a funding mechanism for future projects, right? So instead of, you know, I mean, just using the River Street example, you know, River improving River Street in and of itself doesn't generate any tax revenue for anybody, right? It just makes the road functional. But if somebody were to build a building, right? You build a $10 million building and that creates $10 million worth of, you know, taxable revenue for the urban renewal area. That is probably, at least in my mind, would be a more important thing than having a road with bike lanes on it, right? I mean, because once this is up and generating tax money, then you can bond against that for the road or River Street and whatever the associated improvements are, right? So that's, there's a little bit of, it's the A consideration, but it's, it's yeah, I think it's most. one of the considerations. And I, I was, yeah, and I was sort of like exaggerating for emphasis. Sure. But yeah. Yeah. Let some, let any business uh, buy the mill site and go to work there, and that will swap out it, all everything in terms of the tax increment funding. It will be huge. You know those improvements. That so, they do. so the, the should that ever happen? But that right. could be years. In the future. Well, and one of the one of the I mean, again, not to you know be a wet blanket on that, but you know. Given the size of the mill site, so the 40 acre chunk that's down there that's sort of lot one or whatever it is, if somebody came in and was going to build something scaled to lot one, you're from the time you go through your pre application conference to the time you get your certificate of occupancy and then you eventually roll onto the tax rolls, that's five, six years, right? And so that's a, I mean, that's a big chunk of time, maybe not so much for the, the entire, you know, urban renewal areas timeline, but for just, you know, human beings sitting around waiting for River Street to get approved, it's... I, I must say, though, I, I do think, given the limited revenue that we currently have in the account, mm -hmm. given the challenges on how much we could bond right now, I think that it probably would be rational to proceed as Jim has suggested. Mm -hmm. And if an applicant has a project that's adjacent to the first couple that we're talking about that could be blended into that mix. Exactly. Then that would be we we we, we that would be the answer to your person at the desk though. Would and be, I so if we want staff to find that on their own, we can do that. If we would rather that come from the CAC or Nura, that's kind of what I'm asking. Do we want that like what does that short list look like? Or what do we make sure to include on it? We can go look at the materials, make our best interpretation of those materials and say that they count. Staff can do that right now. But if we need the kind of the blessing or the decision from CAC and Nura, that's that's kind of what I would like to know. And the other part of this is that some of those projects are not going to be privately initiated. Some of them will be city projects. Mm -hmm. So like the lift station would be a great example. I, I've got a quick question too. So on those ones that are not privately initiated, so it's a public project, your city is required to use prevailing wage, bully union labor, right? Yep. Okay. Um, are you offering to build me a lift? <laughs> well, no, I, I, I just, I, I have a question, but I'll wait till I get really technical after the meeting's over. Yeah, How's that? Thank you, thank you. So. Um, I'm going to ask you, Jim, to re read the three suggestions again. And 
then I think it might be worth a roll. I mean, not a roll call vote, but a I yeah, make a motion and um, go from there. Well, okay, I can. I'll do that. Um, in which case, I will start with number three. Do you want to make this your motion, or? Well, I'm going to read it. And yeah, I just want him to read the suggestions yeah. first, but yeah. yeah, somebody can. You can do it one at a time. You want me to read them and all first, and then come back to them and go through them one at a time, or shall I just read them and then we'll do whatever you're going to do now? Well, it is, if you're if they're being treated as each of three possibilities, then it should be something like a show of hands for each. Yeah. Okay, does I'm that make start, sense? Yeah, we'll I think so. I'm going to start with number three, which to me is the key. Maybe one. we identify which one has the most. It's hands. just the to me it's the key issue right now, one two, and that is delete the rubric requirement from our bylaws, which would mean deleting Article Four, Paragraph B, scoring mechanism, which is titled scoring mechanism. Which, as I already said, wouldn't preclude us from using a rubric in the future, but it wouldn't require us to use language. Right now, I don't think we're using it. Okay, let's just have, let's just do a, an informal show of hands. Any whoever's in favor of deleting the requirement from the bylaws? Looks like I did. Don, everybody looks like looks everybody like present. Okay, everybody here. You raised your hand too, right? Okay. Did, yes. Okay. Then you want to go to the other two. Okay, the, the next one, which maybe well, Matt became, became oh, up. No, Matt, sorry. Sorry, Matt, you don't get the vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was just raising my hand in agreement. That's all. Oh, no, okay. okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, number two may be largely obsolete because of what we just decided, number three, mm -hmm. but I'll read number two just the same. So don't go through a rubric scoring exercise at this time. Because it's unnecessary, because 90% of the projects are 10 to 20 years out, all we need to do is figure out what to do in the next one to four years. And that's already been done in the current resolution. So, okay, show of hands to not to go through, not go through the Rubik's exercise, this exercise at, this at this time. Not saying forever. Okay, and there's Matt. We see your hand, Matt. We see that hand. Okay, thank you. And number one, the first one was use the existing approved project plan with one little tweak, which is recommend to the city that after completion of sub area B projects one and two, which is the South River Street from the bypass down to uh, I think it's 14th and the railroad crossing. After those projects and the sub area C project, which is the lift station project, have been completed, the next project should be the sub area E, which is the continuation of River Street improvements north to 9th Street. I would be in favor of that subject to input from engineering on. But if that is the smart way to do it. Well, we're probably not gonna have the money anyway. Well, that's true. Yeah. So this is not, <laughs> that is more of a philosophical thing. It's like <laughs> let's do, let's implement the plan as it stands right now. Yeah. Which is uh projects one and two and B and C, which is largely SDC fund, what we hope. And uh and then philosophically speaking, when more money becomes available, our feeling at this time is that we would continue up. River Street. However, that may be several years out, and the and, the, <laughs> and subject committee right, right, for subject change. change. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are there are vast economies yeah. of scale when you're going when you're doing River Street it, to do more River Street. It seems more. yes, the mobilization fees are huge. I thought it was odd that the <laughs> first thing on the list was to do it down by the to get it from the bypass. What was it? Bypass to Rogers Landing. To me, it was, I thought we should start at Third Street and go south, but I'm thinking of com people in neighborhoods, not so much as urban renewal. Right. Eventually, we get the whole I, thing, I, right? I, I, go I ahead. I can shed okay. some light on at least far as the thinking of it at the time was that that's the least improved portion of River Street as that's it is. Incredible. And what's not known is how to deal with the intersection of 14th Street, River Street, and Rogers Landing Road. If, you know, in the River Street, um, and even the master plan update for the TSB calls for a special study to be done there, mainly because to deal with the intersection there, what does it need to be? A traffic signal roundabout or what? 
depends a lot on what happens with development of the mill site in that corner there. So there's that's kind of where that right. thinking was as part of it being the least amount of infrastructure that exists currently on River Street. It's at least improved right now. Plus, it would lead to getting that study of the intersection to identify what is most appropriate for that to deal with all of the different uses of things. And that would be assuming an industrial use that we'd have a, an employer there, right? Even if even if it starts happening before we have the yes, the, the idea was potentially if we would have someone would be of, have interest in there was the idea and hope at the time there may that may or may not exist at the time of going does. forward there but that would still be the hope to have that influence in there but there could still be that study component to help drive what might occur the locus of factors in that location just makes that a challenge to discern exactly what to do and it depends on other factors yeah Jim. Yeah, I want to go back to one there because I think I should just simplify it when I read it. And I said, right now, the recommendation will be use the existing approved plan. And that is begin implementation of the projects in sub area B and sub area C. That's the, the rest is philosophy unless more money materializes. However, yes. there may be more than you know about that, thanks to that research that we've done about money. So, oh, which would oh is that a segue? Well, you know what? Uh -huh. That was my next that question. Was is, is there was there anything happened between when this plan was put together and now that we should know? So I I mean I don't want to derail the motion though. So we, we, I don't think there was a motion. No, that's, that's what I was just going to say. I think we should do I think we should have a motion and have it seconded and then do a yep. formal vote. And then I can because because it's highly speculative, but I've got some useful speculation about money to see. Yep. But it's highly speculative. I, I would move to adopt the three suggestions as presented. Is that adequate? Yes. Yep. Okay. Is there a second? I will second that. Thank you. Okay. Jen. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I don't Phil. know you all very yep. well. Philip, Jen, thank you. You can put Phil over Phil. Yeah. Okay. Either or. Okay. Um, okay, great. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Yes, for Oh, we can discuss, discuss one. Or, well, that's just that question that I had. Was there is there anything oh, that sure. we should know for money funding or that you were talking about that what, would impact or it it doesn't impact it, this it's plan. not germane to this to the motion on the table. It, right. It's speculative. I just want to mention there are other sub areas that include River Street and that are renewal plan, not just B and so it is Yeah, E and and F. Uh, yeah, and even H part of downtown from first to third. Yeah, 20 years from now. Yeah, so I just wanted to make that clarify. Good. Thank you, Jim. Okay, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Matt? Opposed? I don't, I don't think I'm a voting member, so. Oh, you're yes. right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Opposed? Okay, so it's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Worthy was going to talk to us about bonding and perhaps other things. Just a little bit. So I was, I was uh, tasked, I think, maybe it was by, by you. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. So somebody tasked, awesome. somebody, somebody tasked us to talk to Katie about what bond options we might have potentially to begin some of the first sub areas that were on the plan. And to kind of give us a... 30,000 foot understanding. I'm, I'm pretty ignorant on bonding. Okay. So, I mean, there are different ways that it can be done. It can either be done on the basis of the TIF income yet to come, which is not going to work because there's not enough yet. The financing, right. Right. And as to, to our points, these even these initial dates are, are now not going to work because the costs are too great but the amount of money we would have to borrow in that time frame. So the first thing to know is that's that's one way we could do a bond, which is to be based, as you might common sense think, based upon the tax increment funding. However, there is another way we could do a bond if we desire to do so, which is to use the faith of the city through an IGA mechanism intergovernmental agency whereby the city would secure the bond for the improvements or for the lift station for river street or some other projects in that vicinity who may approach the desk to ask for them to be involved 
and then the city would secure that, it would affect our maximum indebtedness threshold, which our was a concern, the city. cities. Okay. However, Katie studied this some more, and the maximum indebtedness threshold does not have an impact upon the city's ability to borrow future funds for a massive water project. Mm. So in other words, water projects are exempted from the problem of the maximum indebtedness threshold. And the city... Future or past? Future. And the city would not be indebted to have to actually make the payments. The, fund, the NURA funding mechanism would make the payments on what we borrow. So it's a little bit more complicated than having a bond that's obligated on the TIF. Mm -hmm. It would be a city bond. We don't know what form that would be yet because Hawkins is our bond council and they would have to analyze the options in the market and choose the best one. But we can imagine highly theoretically, we might borrow six or $7 million to really do these projects and borrow it through this sort of arrangement with a IGA if the Nura board and the council agree with this sort of concept. It's one way out of our little pickle caused by massive inflation. Otherwise, we're waiting longer. Otherwise, we would be waiting to like the tip. for a very long time. Yeah. The, Hawkins did tell her that they won't be, they, we could not get a bond right now based upon the 425 grand that we have in the kitty right now which is which is only supposed to double by the end of this year right, right. so it's, it's like you know eight, yeah eight hundred thousand dollars doesn't make a lot of payments on Any. much when you're talking numbers when you're talking river street numbers yeah and even in the original plan we thought that we might have enough TIF money in year four or five to begin to do something and that was before the hyperinflation has then where do I get seven or eight million dollars? Well, of course, we've just gone through the Elliott Road fun and games, right? Now, maybe a more cost-effective cross-section could be designed for River Street that would save some money compared to what we did in Elliott Road with a bit more clever design, maybe. But, you know, who knows? Thank you. Anything else? No, oh, that's I finished channeling my inner Katie. Sounds like yeah. we're uh, we're down the road. Bye -bye. No, that's it. Oh. Um. Anybody have any questions for Will? It's kind of reality setting in here. We, we you know we won't be starting anything for a few years, but I think it's good to know where we that we know where we should start. Katie's such a problem solver. So her beginning point was simply asking bond council, is there any way we could agree to special terms to stretch the TIF dollars we currently have? And when that wasn't possible, being the brilliant human being that she is, she then immediately started to solve the problem in a different way. And so this is what she came up with. Are we at the point tonight where we need to make a recommendation to the agency, to Nura? I have a question. Don. Um, so is there a limit to this bonding amount, given what we have? And what is the likelihood of the River Street project going over like the Elliott Street project did and limiting and us bumping up against that ceiling? I have a feeling it's a lot less likely than it was in the recent past. I think we're putting more managerial controls into how we do CIP and our new relationship with Keller, now this bit speculation, the engineering firm, the engineering firm that we, we're making a relationship with, they're a slightly smaller player than some of the big ones. They're a bit more regional. I think we may get more realistic pricing structures from them, but time will tell. Certainly the engineering staff had nothing negative to say about Keller and saw their relationship as an advantageous one. So, so just so you know that this is the managerial change because we've just restructured engineering somewhat because of recent events. Outsourcing it. 
and so we have a we have a different engineering structure where we have an in-house sort of on-call engineering firm to try to get cost control and, and let me be actually no I can't say that on this no there are there are psychological factors that may help Keller stay more inside the lines. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I'm back to my question about whether we really, I don't think there's really anything to recommend at this point, share what we did, you know, the, the motion that passed mm -hmm. and knowing it's down the road. And it seems to me like that is the recommendation is proceed with the plan. And as soon as it's right. and then when financial somebody feasible. comes in with the project, it all goes out the window. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you've got to be flexible on the battlefield. Yeah, that's the way it is. exactly. And and that's the, that, the way I would see that happening is if if that happened, and these are kind of you know big ifs. Well, staff would talk to staff management, and that would come before the CAC, and there'd be discussion, and go, yeah, you know what, that's not a good idea, yep. and and we bless that. Yep. We think that's a really good idea. It's fluid. And I, I doubt very much the CAC is often going to, it's not impossible, but it's going to disagree yeah. with the experts, like Russ Thomas, who knows How the do you disagree with Russ now. Thomas? <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I think our work here is done for this evening. Jim. One more, Jim. I... Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. It's on the other page, and I, I missed it. Sorry, Jim. Yeah. Um, the seven point one is about using NewburgOregon.gov email system. So we're we're going to always use your city email to communicate uh, from about CAC meetings and other stuff. I have so, moved the how to into my inbox. You have. I have. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Good. Good. Just we're all, all, if yeah, you need we'll help with that, please reach out to me, and I'll help you get that. What we'll make serial yeah. meetings for us? And if you don't know what we're talking oh, yeah. about, speak to Rachel. Yes. Yeah, and just to be clear, there's lots of reasons to require that, one of which is, um, if, as an example, Rachel is using people's personal emails, and Rachel goes on vacation, and someone else is filming for her, uh, they may not have access to your personal email, so you may get missed out. Another reason is, is that if there's ever a legal action, and a public records request, your personal email is part of that. And if there's ever a legal action, it, yeah. your personal email system can be subpoenaed. And your email is now belongs to the state or you know, whoever. So just using the one email system simplifies it. And all well, the other reason is, is that everybody on staff can find your Newburgh Oregon email, uh, the exception being, of course, TBF and R and Matt there, but the other CAC members. You're all searchable, and anybody in staff can find your email and, and know what it is. But if, if you use personal, they're not going to do that. And, and we won't have to bother you if there is a public record request because we can go behind the scenes search and get it. So, yeah. Although we often let people know. Yeah, so I'll usually safe. let you know if someone's requesting your email. So. But like with Corinne and Matt, can we, do they have, they can have a new bird. They have not done it for outside entities that are already public bodies because okay. their emails are already being yeah. managed. Okay. That's uh, the same retention laws. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. been the same policy. Okay, I just processed. need to make sure I have yeah. those. But I do have those and ready to go. Um, I also had a short uh, <laughs> housekeeping type item. When you're scheduling meetings for this committee, they need to come through my office first for any changes placed because there's so many little details to get lined up that are easy to miss. And I know there was some confusion about location tonight. If it comes through me before any other discussion happens, I can let you know kind of what our options are. Um, when I look back, there was a reason we had moved to PSB tonight and you can hear it out those windows right now. Uh, we had decided to move so that we wouldn't have the parking conflicts and, and the noise from tunes on Tuesdays. Then we moved back, which is okay. But it gets confusing, so we really need to start with my office because I know all those little details, and I can make sure that we don't run into conflicts and that everything is announced properly. So, and, and that I should say I was the one that moved it back because Molly had stepped out. Peggy was not yet assigned, 
And uh, I remember Molly jokingly said, if I ever get hit by a bus you you're going to have to figure out these meetings. Mm -hmm. So I prefer this setting myself, this sitting on a table. This is the setting I prefer. I find the public safety building just, I don't know, not conducive to this kind of discussion. So that's why I moved it back. But uh, it, I prefer to keep, keep it here myself, but you know, I. Doesn't make a big difference. It's the happiest building in I the like, city. Yeah. I like the library. <laughs> okay. And yeah. once many halls reopen, we have a couple options in that space. Oh, yeah. As well. but, and we do have right now, uh, we're on the perpetual calendar here at this location, except for one date. And no one quite knows how the conflict arose, but I think it's September 24th. Uh, we have to go to the public safety building in there. And I can do this kind of table setup in that room. Yeah. It does not have to be the big Oh, okay. we can do this. In that room. Probably use the Apple action. Yep, we can even use the Apple. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, there's, yeah, that's a deciding factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Apple. Okay. All right. Does it, does it, the committee mind if staff begin to gently investigate the sorts of costs involved in some of the projects that are the first ones in the plan? Would that be I, a problem? I would love that. A good yeah. idea. Okay. Not that I want to necessarily dump a bunch more work on ourselves. But yeah. just I think a number of the yeah. projects are probably in our four-year overall wish yes, list they are. plan either. So they're just as the total budget scenarios. And to park it for a month staff, maybe we share which ones are would be fully city initiated and which ones would be privately or something else. Yeah, I mean, it, I think, I think we now have some idea about the list of you know following the plan. Mm -hmm. If there are any orbiting right now from private parties, that's something we should know upfront, right? So we can we the staff we can look at that and let yeah, we'll let you know. And I don't mind letting some of those parties know as long as there's no NDA or if, weird. right? So that there is just a a heads up on are they on our short list or are they beyond that? Sure. Because if, if they've got the impression that maintenance is available in the short term, then I would like to let them know if, if we get clarity that it's not really available in the short term. Yeah, I mean, if something, to Phil's point, if something could bring in some extra tax increment and it's adjacent to this priority that we've agreed on, we would be fools not to spend a little bit more money to accelerate the tax increment. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much. By the way, I'll see you break. next month.